Hi, uh, lovely that you're here, thank you. Uh, glad that you could wake up after a lovely night, a uh, lovely dinner, and uh, I'm sure uh, we've had lots of drinks last night and uh, more to follow today. Um, <laughs> today I'm here to talk about Facebook and um, about how that affects your business and about how it affects businesses in general. Uh, Facebook, I, I love the presentation before. Um, we, for example, internally, we don't use uh, wikis. Uh, we use Facebook groups for internal communications. Uh, and it's really, really effective because everyone uh, from our company, well, has to be on Facebook, sort of. And um, they get notifications every time something's posted. So actually get very good engagement and feedback inside those groups. Uh, but that's not what I'm about to speak today. Let me introduce myself. I'm Jan Rezop. I'm CEO of, of Candy Tech, uh, one of the Facebook preferred developer consultants. We basically do two things. Uh, we have uh, Candy Tech, which is a Facebook uh, marketing agency, a typical agency that will go and develop your application on Facebook. And Social Bakers, which is for us a scalable part. We have a, a great statistics portal, the largest Facebook stats portal in the world. Um, and, uh, and we offer some great management and analytics services as software as a service. This is the portal. I'd love if you could take a look at it, see some of the stats, uh, look at some of the countries, uh, country statistics. I think you'll be amazed about the depth of the data that you already get on the site uh, for free. So some Facebook facts. And generally, my presentation today is about figuring if Facebook's your friend or your foe. Um, I'm not going to actually answer that question. Um, from our point of view, our, obviously Facebook's a friend, and I think everybody has to figure it on their own and uh, about you know what's what's uh, what's Facebook bringing uh, on the on the bottom line. Facebook's right now at 670 million users. Just in 2010, it grew from 330 million to 580 million users. That's 250 million users in, in, uh, in one year. That's uh, around 8.2 registrations uh, every second. So you know, that's relatively fast. Initially, Facebook was more of a college thing. But uh, looking at the, at the age groups right now, especially at the, at the faster growing, uh, right now, Facebook's really growing in the, in the, in the higher uh, age groups, and uh, especially in the, some of the countries where it's penetrated, where it started to be penetrated more and more. It's growing in the, in the higher age groups. Facebook is a dominant platform. It's basically a number one social network by far from everybody else. We still hear companies go, what about Twitter? What about that? What about this? Uh, Facebook's the only thing you have to really focus 90, 95% of your time to. Facebook's uh, primarily exciting because, you know, A, you have your friends over there. And, and friends are a very, very important experience. And people now really use Facebook as sort of connections place, almost your phone book. Uh, and, and what's really exciting about Facebook is, is the news feed, really. Uh, you know, you can go on and, and see what's happening in your friends and, and the most recent things that are going on, the most popular things, where, where friends are checking in, what videos they're sharing. And as well, if you like a company, well, the news, the, the news from the company will pop up in that news feed. So the news feed is a central piece of everything happening. So is Facebook your friend in this? And, and you know, people implementing like buttons and, and started implementing like buttons just when Facebook launched it. But nobody really did some math around the like buttons. People just put them on there because, well, A, Facebook's cool, and B, Facebook's cool. So they just really put it up there uh, without, without any logics. But moving on, and, and obviously Facebook trying to figure out the logics for publishers and for the companies implementing these uh, like buttons, uh, right now, if, if, uh, you, if a user of yours goes to your site, your website, and clicks that like button, you'll get four users from it on average. And that's pretty good of a deal. He doesn't, that, that guy didn't go away from your site to Facebook. It just clicked a button on your website that you put it there. Now, the question is, does that change your perception of where to put that like button, how to promote it, how to sort of make sure users, users see where it is and click on it? That's, it's very important. Many people still put it on the bottom of the page, which is a horrible location to put it. 
sort of a, a, a couple things, definitions. Obviously, on Facebook, you can do things like uh, Facebook pages, applications, and advertising. Uh, sort of applications go and you can, they publish messages to your newsfeed. Uh, pages publish, publish little stories that you became a fan of something. Advertising uh, is on the right. Now, my cousin, who's, uh, who's 13 years old, and he actually, or 14 now, but he asked me this when he was 12, it's like, which he shouldn't have been on Facebook technically, but don't tell him. Uh, he asked me, so, so will Facebook be paid? This was a big thing. Will, will Facebook be paid by 1st of July? It was there like every year. It's like, I'm, I said, no, it's not going to be paid. I mean, people would, would leave the social network. And he says, well, how's it making money? And I said, through, through the ads on the right-hand side. He looks at the site, literally at an open site. He says, what ads? He didn't see the ads. There were a lot of contextual t-shirt ads and, and things for him because he had this set age of 13. He said, what ads? He didn't see those as ads. <clears throat> and moving forward with Facebook sort of implementing sponsored stories, where they're actually just, what they're just doing is taking a, a story from one of your friends and just putting it, putting it up. And you're pay, you're, as an advertiser, you're paying for that. But that message was actually generated by, by a page I already like or by a friend of mine who checked it in Starbucks. And all Starbucks did was just pushed it up for a certain cost, pushed it up in the news feed technically, right? Um, obviously, the Facebook, with the Facebook pages, which is your central piece on Facebook, you have the wall where, uh, of your Facebook page that the, then goes to the wall of the users and the tabs. Tabs are very, very important. Uh, companies really do like a central experience with tabs and they, they, use, they use the tabs for branding. Uh, they also use the tabs to welcome their customers. You go to a Facebook page, you want to welcome somebody, but you just don't want to tell him, you know, welcome and bring him like a whole home page like you have on your website. You just want to tell him, like us, for, you know, playing our game, for playing a special video, for becoming a part of a great community, for taking part of our competition. Uh, it can be whatever, but basically it has to make clear sense and it has to be a clear, almost a one-line message. Uh, just, you know, like us and, and figure out more. The beauty of a Facebook page is if somebody likes your Facebook page, the, Facebook, uh, the tab reloads and you can, you can automatically put some, some content on there like thanks or just put the content that, that he, was, he was looking at. I, I had a pre I, I've seen the presentation from... Um, from junk mail yesterday and, and looked at their Facebook page. And obviously they, had, they have paid classified ads on their website uh, with, with text messages, right? Uh, but obviously people go to their Facebook page and uh, post it there. And that's for free. <laughs> um, obviously they don't like that and nobody would like that. And they can comment on that and, and uh, talk to the people. But this is, this is exactly what, uh, you know, what logic is, what the people will have. The people didn't think that was illogical. They, they went to a Facebook page called Junk Mail. So they went and they posted uh, an ad for their dog. Um, but, you know, it's not only about on Facebook things, but especially for you, it's about off of Facebook things. Implementing like buttons, implementing like boxes so people actually find that you have a Facebook presence from your website. Implementing the beautiful comment buttons, the, the, the comment boxes, these are really great. So if you put that on your site and somebody really starts commenting and, and you start replying to these guys, they get notifications back on their Facebook profile. So you, know, you, can, you can click back and, and when they get a notification, this, this notification actually goes to your site, which is a great alert system and you couldn't develop one that, that would be more effective and better and actually you know, cross-connected with Facebook. The login button, that, that's something very important to Facebook Connect, putting it on your site for authentication. And the new send button. The new send button is sort of like the like button, but with like you're sharing with all your friends. With the send, you just choose a few friends and send it in their message box. This is new and especially for classifieds. I mean, if you guys don't have that, this takes like two minutes to implement on your site. And this will bring uh, you know, quite a few additional users. You guys should definitely, uh, definitely have that, have that implemented. It, it, it'll really literally take two minutes. <clears throat> so what about your companies on Facebook? This is a few classified sites um, that, that we got a list of. Sorry if, if you're in there, sorry if you're not in there. Um, now, this is what we call our Facebook page score. 
Um, this, on average, uh, the, the score from, at, in the market is on average 65%. Now, the average score in the classifieds market was 40%. Uh, what does that mean? It means that the pages does, do, did not have their, their landing tabs. They did not post enough uh, to their Facebook pages or posted too much on their Facebook pages. The pages had low engagement, so relatively low engagement. If you actually look at the engagement, the Recycler.com, the pets, was the highest engaging, actually 0.2%. That's, that's very, very good. Uh, like Coca-Cola has like uh, something like a 0.02, so it's something like you know, on, under there. Uh, but this is, this is pretty good. Um, and if you look at the frequency of posting, this is in a month. This is the number of posts by that page in a month. Some of the pages even, even go and post you know, 130 times in a month. Four times a day on average, six times a day in, in, a, in, a, in, an average, in a working week. That's normal. The people can actually sort of sustain that. That's, that's sort of the limit uh, because it then affects your engagement. I mean, obviously, market.de is not in the top, uh, but they're not doing very bad. If we look at the classifieds pages, uh, they're mostly not set up. If we look at a eBay even, uh, I mean, they have... They have this for a landing page, but even before uh, Mother's Day, they didn't even have anything that was, that was significantly better. We're really, you know, why should I like eBay? Uh, I mean, do they have a, have a like button or something? There was this study made by, made by a technology that monitors open opinions on, on, on social media, monitors the conversations that, that, that are happening. And they figured out eBay is the top brand on Facebook. Now, we went back to their methodology and said, well, this is, this is, it's not about the, it's not a best brand on Facebook, technically. I mean, Coca-Cola with their 20-something million fans is the best brand on Facebook. But why, what makes eBay the most successful and talked about brand on Facebook? Well, it's, it's obvious. People wanting to sell their stuff and just sharing it with their friends. It's quite logical, right? And... Uh, People just using Facebook, I mean, eBay is not that well connected with Facebook, but people just use that experience and share it on their Facebook pages. I think it, they have a share on, uh, on average every minute, um, looking, at, looking at just the numbers. So looking at just, just summing up for, for, for this part, uh, best practices. Well, make sure you have like a landing tab, like a clear message that you're telling why they should become a fan of your community. Don't post too often. Uh, don't post too few. Uh, build a lot of competitions. I heard a lot of people yesterday saying, well, I built my Facebook page. I got this much fans in like six months. But then I did a competition, and I got that much fans in like a month or a couple of weeks. And, and that's best practices everywhere. Respond and communicate to your, to your fans. I mean, if you won't talk to them, if they'll ask you questions and you won't talk to them, that's not really good. So if I turn it around to worst practices, well, not posting on your, the, the worst thing it can look like is you don't post to your Facebook page, you don't communicate with your fans, you start fighting with your fans or arguing that, that they're not really right. The fans are technically always right, even though they have a flawed, flawed uh, way of viewing things. Uh, they're always right, technically. And obviously, posting the same content again and again, uh, that really never works. But if we look back to, to eBay over here, uh, they actually posted twice over the last month. And their engagement is in the dumps, really. Um, so average like a 0.04% engagement. They only did two posts. So their fans are completely not engaged. Fans are getting like beep, you know, no communication at all. Nobody's writing there. The, the community looks like it's dead. But if we look at other companies really playing with it. Uh, I'll obviously look at any media company on Facebook and look at how they do it. Look at the BBCs, look at the CNNs, and look at how they're managing their Facebook pages. They're doing it very, very well. We at Social Baker sort of figured out that um, there's a lot of tools for social media management. You know, I think mention was Hootsuite, and, and there, there's, there's tens or hundreds of social media management tools. We at Social Bakers decided to sort of step into that and, and say, well, there's not real one central social media management tool that you can come in and manage, manage uh, everything on Facebook, the tabs, the analytics, competition analytics from one place. 
So we built uh, a tool that we're launching actually later today uh, that you can do that with. Um, and that you can create and upload your, your tab really simply. But that's all the sales pitch I have for today. Uh, one campaign we did using this tool is for a Turkish mobile operator, Avea. Avea is um, the third largest operator in Turkey. They have 12 million, they have 12 million customers. Um, and bef when we started working with them, they had 60,000 fans. For 12 million customers, you couldn't get a penny from your management to, to really get that going. You have to see some traction of the Facebook page. Um, even though 50,000 sounds a lot in normal terms, but for a co company of 12 million customers, it's not so much. So what we did is we said, well, uh, let's use our content management system and our CRM and plug it directly to the Avea gateways for billing. And let's give these guys 2,000 free minutes for a week, limited, uh, if they become a fan. So we gave them that. And people just put in their phone numbers and linked it, uh, which is another great benefit because Avea now has one million mobile phone numbers linked with Facebook accounts and emails that they can communicate to. Previously, Ava did have literally almost no information because in Turkey, it's like a 90% prepaid market. So they, they literally didn't know who those prepaid customers were. So we made sure they, know, they now know their likes, they know their interests, they can figure out uh, you know, what, what's the favorite music among my fans very easily. And uh, basically, the, the Ava page got from 100,000 fans uh, uh, just before this campaign, uh, 60 a couple months ago, to 1.2 million fans, where it starts making sense for the company to, to start working with it a little more, invest in the social media a little bit more, and put some serious money on there. So just showed some metrics, but what are the key metrics that you should follow on, on Facebook? Well, obviously, the size and growth of your fan page is, is what you'll be looking at. I heard, I heard some people yesterday saying, you know, oh, we didn't, we didn't really want to go on Facebook, but uh, our competition was doing it, and they are smaller on the market. So we had to make a Facebook page, and we had to get more fans on it than they did. And I, I think I heard that twice or three times yesterday. And, uh, you know, just looking at that, people, people, will, people have, have ego, right? People create their Facebook fan pages and brands. Uh, you know, we see marketing directors of, of, of brands coming to us and say, well, I'm not interested about the marketing campaign results or anything. I just want to have more fans than my competition. So they, they shift a, a, a load of money for, for ads on Facebook and for apps just for, you know, being bigger on Facebook than their competitors, which is great for us. And <clears throat> Obviously, monitoring user interactions and engagement, very, very important. Uh, monitoring the content, what content works. So if you, if you take a look at all your competitors and look at all the content they posted on a Facebook page, make a retraction of, of the top 20 posts they did, and, and uh, we'll see what worked and, and do the same. I mean, it's, it's a market where the results are constantly open, and, and all of it is open, which is beautiful because you can see what, what simply what worked. Respond and manage your community. Talk to it, uh, discuss it, and compare all of that with competitors, obviously. Facebook is really, I would say, the most measurable thing online. Online is very measurable by, by itself, but Facebook is even more measurable. You see social demographics for everything. You see conversion tracking, information, content, key influencers, who influences your brand uh, the most on Facebook, sort of everything are around that. And finally, some case studies. Um, Europa 2 is, is, a, is a number one Czech radio. Uh, they're about 880,000 uh, listeners. And uh, they were the first radio, one of the first radios in, in actually in Europe to, to launch uh, their Facebook presence and their Facebook pages. What they decided, and at the time it was very innovative, was uh, not doing a Facebook page for their radio, but to go and do already uh, different Facebook pages for all their different shows that were directly managed by the people doing the show. So if, if, if this famous guy got, was, 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 was doing a show, he was actually the guy managing, writing, communi and communicating on the Facebook page. And that became so attractive that the top shows got like 150, 200,000 fans immediately. And the whole radio, considering overlap, had 400,000 uh, fans on Facebook, which is almost half their listenership on Facebook, interacting and engaging with them every day. 
Now, right now, the, the way you, you, you make uh, songs sing on the radio, you vote on Facebook. You comment on their, on their Facebook pages. And, and now they say, when, when they say it in, 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 in sort of the radio, they said, well, you know, if you, want to sing, if you want us to play a song, well, go on a Facebook page and comment on the update that I just did, or send us an email or call us. If you're like totally loser. But that's how it sort of felt in you. And nobody would call or send an email anymore. Um, we did, in the last um, two years, we did about 10 to 15 different sports applications on Facebook. Sports is a, is a, is a you know, big deal on Facebook. People are fans. The soccer clubs' Facebook pages are huge. They have millions and millions of fans. And, and we used that and made uh, play betting on Facebook. Not for real money. That's technically, uh, legally, not possible. Uh, but for play money, to, to upsell uh, the customers to, or, or to extend a brand of, of Hyundai or something who sponsored the, the World Cup. And uh, we did many uh, apps around, around sports in, for example, football. You, you basically uh, went and betted on the World Cup, or you betted on the, on the different games. Uh, and in total, uh, on average in the apps, about 150,000 participated. Um, within, within all our sports apps, I think now it's about 1 million users that are actively engaging with those sports applications. And they're generating so much content, so much news feed, so much information. In, in the news feeds constantly. And these are not applications that are like a campaign. They're, they don't last two weeks. They last all season, uh, which, is, which is great. They, they, they just leverage and make, make, uh, make the portals uh, bigger and better. We did this uh, last, last May. Uh, and uh, Czech has a holiday, which is coming up in two days, called 1st of May. Uh, it's like our second Valentine's Day, but, uh, but bigger. Uh, where, where you supposedly have to kiss girls under the uh, under a specific type of tree, or they um, how do you translate that dry up, dry up is <laughs> so yeah <laughs> um, so we did this uh, application uh, that was just on Facebook to send kisses, and really this was very successful, especially if you consider the two days before May and one day after, after 1st of May, uh, people send 5 million kisses between their Facebook profiles. So Facebook's not always about, about sophisticated uh, super solution. It's about, you know, send kisses and win, you know, and, and that, that will work very, very well. Uh, or send gifts and win. This attracted 275,000 unique users. And if you look at the, really the, the hike up, it, it, most of it happened in the first 10, 15 days, and then it was silence. But what the brand generated was immediate a conversion of those people. Actually, 50,000 of these people became fans of the brand. So they had zero fans before, and 50,000 fan, fan, fans after this campaign, uh, which normally on a, on a Facebook uh, advertising, you would pay like a dollar, two dollars, maybe even five dollars for a fan. So technically, if you consider that doing that through advertising, it would have cost you $250,000 in the worst case, or $100,000 in the best case. Uh, we did this quiz for, for Peugeot called, What's Your Real Age? It was a sophisticated mind quiz, um, which generated a response on, you know, your real age is X. And the funny way how it was calculated was not through the responses that you did. Just took the age of your profile and, and did a minus. Uh, with women, it was a little more. <laughs> um, and with women, there was a calculation. With women that were younger, uh, like 13, 14, it, it, it said 18, always said 18. Uh, with, uh, with women that were around 20, it said like 22. With women that were sort of getting into 25, it said about 21. With women 30, it said about 23, 24. <laughs> And, uh, but it, but it, going up, it said, like, after 40, it started saying, like, 21 constantly. <laughs> so it didn't matter what they responded in the quiz. It was just about, you know, uh, a, a nice result. And everybody loves to publish a positive response uh, of a quiz. And that's what uh, really worked on this, and, and people really, really published it. The nice thing about that, 90,000 users um, participated, again, most in the first few days. 
But what's nicer about this, this was a real e-commerce case study. This was uh, by Peugeot. Basically, it said after you published this to your friends, which was the main viral message to keep it going, it said, well, you look young, so you could try a test ride in this really new, young, savvy car. And uh, people did. Actually, 1,800 people did. The goal of the campaign was, uh, was to get 1,500, uh, 1500 test rides, was really optimistic from the entire campaign. Considering Facebook was 10% of that campaign, 1,800 test rides from 10% is, is really good. Like Henry Ford used to say, I know part of my marketing budget is inefficient, I just don't know which one. It's the web one. Um, so what are the takeaways before we get to hopefully some questions? Um, you know, you have a clear brand message um, and you have some entertainment. Um, on Facebook, you have to hit the sweet spot of that. And uh, if we would have done a, done a quiz, what Peugeot car are you? It would say, you are Peugeot 207. That wouldn't have really worked. Nobody would have published that. Nobody would even, you know, people would exit from the, from the quiz. This quiz had a 90% fill rate because it, it was just entertaining to answer it and obviously entertaining to get the result. Um, so, so the real takeaways, build your Facebook fan pages. Build your presence around Facebook. Make sure, obviously, that you link uh, your websites really, really well uh, around your Facebook page, around your tabs on your Facebook profiles. And uh, obviously, integrate them, integrate them correctly with your sites. Um, beautiful thing is about Facebook, it's measurable. You can see how your competitors are doing. You can see how you're doing. And uh, do measure that. Make sure you measure that at least once in two weeks. Please do that for me. Um, if you want to go and talk to me uh, about any of the analytics and management services, those are things that we do, uh, that we specialize in. We help companies do that. So I do speaking at shows because it's fun. Uh, I love it. And uh, as well to, to talk about some great integrations and how we can help. So thank you. And uh... <laughs>